one fifth of Koreans are suffering from hair loss. We will cover the hair loss related market, which is growing along with the increase in hair loss sufferers. Boosting the economy is the key direction of the Pakune administration. We will assess the outcome of the government's economic policy amid the second anniversary of President Park's inauguration. Just thinking about it will make it happen without using devices. We will check out the present and future of brainwave technology that is used in automobiles, games, and in the treatment of dementia. We can immediately report inconveniences and risk factors in our lives. We introduce you to civil complaints processing system that has become faster and more accurate with the help of ICT. Kim Jong Un shows off his movements through the press and focuses on holding one off events and building recreational facilities. What is he aiming to achieve through such showmanship driven leadership and how effective is it? Hello, I'm Andrew Salmon and welcome to Bizline. Now, it's one of the great blights affecting the modern head hair loss. In the past, it was mainly middle aged or older men who agonized over this condition, but now it's striking an increasingly younger demographic, and women are no longer immune. In fact, some 10 million Koreans, that's one fifth of the population, now suffer from some form of hair loss. But as the Korean hairline recedes, so a new Korean industry is coming into being to deal with this problem. This raises several questions. Firstly, what is driving this increase in hair loss among modern Koreans? What kind of treatments exist to deal with it? And how big will the industry grow looking ahead? Ten million people, or one fifth of Republic of Korea's population. The market is worth a whopping three billion U.S. dollars. We introduce to you the hair loss-related market, which is growing into a huge industry. We visited a home in Kimpo, Gyeonggi-do Province. This housekeeper has an agonizing secret. As she reached middle age and menopause, she began to suffer from hair loss. As she began to lose hair, she strived to treat and prevent it. Her conditions have much improved after changing her shampoo to hair loss prevention products and frequently massaging her scalp. I was born in the summer, I was born in the summer, I was born in the summer, and I was born in the summer, and I was born in the summer. Alopecia, or hair loss, refers to a condition in which patients lack hair where they normally should have, or in general, when their thick hair falls out. Normally, people will lose about 50 to 70 strands of hair when washing their hair. But if they lose more than 100 hair strands, they should suspect hair loss stemming from ailments. Now, hair loss has emerged as one of the major modern diseases that is spreading regardless of age or gender. According to statistics by Health Insurance Review and Assessment Service, the number of alopecia patients stood at 210,000 in 2013, up 17% from about 180,000 in 2009. Treatment costs have also surged 48% in the cited period. By age group, those in their 30s have the most alopecia patients, followed by the 40s and 20s age groups. Only older people were thought to be susceptible to hair loss, but the age group of hair loss sufferers has been continuing to fall. 예방 생활에서 평소에 내가 어떻게 관리하고 또 어떤 라이프 스타일을 가지냐 따라서 그 자연스러운 현상이라고 보여지기도 합니다. 그래서 요즘에는 많은 그 제품들이 개발되고 또 나에 맞는 그 좋은 제품들이 개발되고 있습니다. More and more specialized manufacturing firms of hair loss products are springing up. Skin Farm makes hair loss shampoos and other products. It is developing and manufacturing hair loss improvement products and selling them at home and abroad. 이제 저희가 그 탈모에 관해서 연구하고 개발하고 한지간 10년쯤 되다 보니까 다양한 회사들이 
자기만의 갖고 있는 어떤 추출물의 노하우나 이런 것들을 가져와 가지고 탈모 샴푸들을 개발해 달라고 해서 여러 회사들을 개발을 해 줬어요. 기본적으로 탈모를 방지할 수 있는 식약처에서 인증된 그러한 원료를 가지고 복합해서 여러 가지의 제품들을 지금 만들고 있죠. The company is also aggressively developing technology by discovering materials good for curing hair loss, conducting research and making products through clinical tests. With the spread of those suffering from hair loss, special clinics for treating hair loss are also emerging. Hair loss occurs because of various genetic or acquired factors. This oriental medicine clinic measures people's body constitutions and uses both medicine and direct treatments. As a result, patients of all ages are flocking to this place. 점차 점증 추세에 있는데요. 일반적으로 여성 남성 탈모 환자의 그 호발 연령이 20대 중 후반이었는데 최근 들어서는 20대 초반. 심지어는 10대 후반에 이르기까지 어, 탈모에 노출되는 나이가 점점 당겨지고 있고요. 어, 저희 한의원의 남성 여성 탈모 환자분들의 비율이 거의 5대 5에 이른다는 것에서 알수 있듯이 최근 들어서 여성 환자분의 탈모 증상이 어, 점차 증가하고 있는 추세입니다. Hair loss products are easily found in pharmacies. As symptoms of hair loss and age groups of hair loss sufferers are becoming diverse and increasing number of people are trying to cure or prevent hair loss, many more related products are being launched. A wig is the last resort for hair loss sufferers. HIMO is the number one wig company in the country where the wig industry, worth 600 million US dollars, is sharply growing. HIMO has been making customized wigs that perfectly fit a customer's head using a 3D scanner. It is producing natural wigs which look as if each strand of hair is implanted into the scalp. It is offering fixed and detachable type wigs or hair pieces in line with customers' conditions. 고객님들이 뭐 옛날에는 뭐한 3, 40대, 4, 50대 뭐 이렇게 위층이었다면 지금은 사실 환경적인 요인도 많아서 그런지 초등학생부터 탈모 인구가 사실 어느 층에 국한되어 있지는 않거든요. 그리고 이제 요즘은 암 환자분들도 워낙 많으시기 때문에 여성분들 같은 경우에는 그 여성암인 경우에는 거의 탈모가 100% 동반되고 있거든요. 그러다 보니까 가발은 필수적인 요소가 되고 있습니다. With the sharp rise in demand for hair loss prevention, treatment and service products, related market is likely to grow infinitely going forward. 우리나라가 이렇게 한류 열풍과 화장품에 더불어서 그 화장품 안에서도 탈모 관련된 제품이나 이런 시장들이 아마 국익에 또 국내 탈모 그 산업이나 기업들에게 많은 영향을 미치고 있는데 앞으로도 크게 성장하다 기대를 하고 있습니다. We expect the hair loss industry to continue to grow rapidly, curing hair loss conditions and the minds of the patients. February 25th marks the start of President Park's third year in the Blue House. Now, during her inauguration in 2013, she pledged to make Koreans happier and also to accelerate the economy. So has she been successful in these endeavors? These are the questions we have for our guest today. And he is the right man to ask because he was formerly one of her economic advisors. Currently, he is a professor of economics at Sukhumyam Munj University in Seoul and a regular guest on the show. Professor Shin Tae-dong, welcome back to Bizline. Thank you. Um, first question, are Koreans happier? Well, that's quite a subjective question. And, <laughs> Just a little bit. Uh, the answer yeah. may be different. Yeah. Who do you ask to? Sure. Uh, definitely, there will be some, some people who has gotten a lot happier since this government set in mm. two years ago. Who are those, especially who are like those the people? Especially elderly people mm. who were able to get uh, almost $200 a month for, you know, this for the lifespan. And also yeah. the families of, you know, with the toddlers mm. because the government pledged to supply all the necessary, you know, expenses to the 
the toddlers from zero uh -huh. to five years. And also there has been some benefits to students and also uh, unemployed uh, labor forces. So mm. there are a group of people who become a lot happier compared to previous government. Mm. But majority of people, mm. majority of people, uh, I don't think uh, they, they feel they are a mm. lot happier because there are a number of surveys show that, you know, this government uh, is since 2013, mm. every indicators in the survey shows that uh, the, the index has coming down. The happiness index. Happiness index. Mm. And also uh, one of the indexes that I, I had uh, set out two years mm. ago, it is the people's living index, which measures the, you know, the cost and the burden of life. Uh, life okay. and, and a cost of living index. Yes, yeah. and also yeah, you know, the, the the amount of money mm. that you get from the company and the the price level and the the price in, and the rents and all mm. those you know, indexes all together, we had uh, we had invented uh, people's living index. Yeah, and it shows that for two consecutive years it dropped from one hundred one down to ninety eight. So. Uh, a majority of people feel they're less happier than, than, than previously. Yeah, uh -huh. Okay, well that's not good news, but and of course this is reflected in President Park's approval ratings, which have fallen sharply from her early days. Now, I do have to ask you this. I mean, is this a problem that's unique to President Park and Hare, or is this simply the, the, the lame duck syndrome which affects all single-term Korean presidents as they start to approach their mid and End term. Well, you may say that, you know, the president in, in her presidential election, she set out the many challenging, uh, you know, goals for yep. Korean people. She, she promised too much. Uh-huh, too much, right? And yeah. so people's expectation from this government has been elevated to mm. a greater extent. And, and, and the people now feel that, you know, that expectation is not met by by the current government so mm. so the real problem is not because of the president but mm. because of the government's you know incapability to fulfill to deliver the, the promise your president's yeah. promises so uh, you can find the many reasons why you know the, mm. the, the current government cannot fulfill the, the president's uh, pledges in her inauguration speeches. Okay. President Park has re-emphasized the importance of culture and creativity. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, one of the early buzzwords in this government was the so-called creative economy. Do you think that this promise is being delivered? Well, before we're talking about whether that was delivered or not, uh, we mm. have to understand the creative economy or creation economy that I used to say requires mm. long period of maturity. It requires maybe 10 years or, or mm. 20 years. So it is premature to talk about whether her creative economy is making success or not because mm. it is too early to tell or, uh, to talk about the you know, fruits of it. I, I mean, I take your point, yeah. certainly. Okay. These kind of movements are big picture movements. But that having been said, surely the groundwork mm -hmm. can be laid mm -hmm. in to two and a half years. Are you satisfied that the groundwork in terms of financing, in terms of change mindsets, in terms of deregulation is being set in place? Definitely not. Definitely mm. not. Because uh, first of all, I think, you know, creative economy or creative re society requires autonomous participation for the economy, right? From the start, the government policy regarding creative economy is government directed, top down, government right. okay. oriented. So point. that's why yeah. you know this kind of uh, activity is very difficult to achieve, even in the longer run, because it lacks auto autonomous it lacks participation. Yes. That's one thing. Another one is, okay, it is related to the issue of auto autonomy. That is uh, the talent. Mm. We need the talent of the people, and the talent is creative only under the environment of autonomous surroundings. So mm. auto autonomous, you know, backgrounds and also the talents in that two respects, I think, you know, the creative economy from this government is very difficult to expect any, you know, any uh, significant, uh, achievement. significant achievement in, the, in mm. the short run. And another point is, you know, the resources. Mm. But a as I said, you know, a lot of welfare programs require a huge amount of resources. 
And uh, in, in, in considering this kind of a slowdown in the economy mm. uh, with the slowdown in the tax revenues, it is even more difficult to, to you know, channel, channel the, the funds to, to the to creative economy, which is right. very uh, fuzzy in, in, in its nature. Okay. Let's move on to employment. Now, the government announced some measures for non-regular employees who are now a massive part of the Korean workforce um, in December. Right. But apart from that, how would you assess the government's uh, employment performance thus well, far? Well, you know, about a year and a half ago, the government and the president pledged that uh, uh, this government's policy, as long as employment is, to reach a 70% employment rate mm. from about 62 or 65 percent. So we have to improve uh, at least the 5 percent point mm. pointage in, in employment rate. And if you look at the number for the last two years, there is a significant increase in the rate of employment. So I think whether the government will be successful in achieving 70 percent target by the end of her government, that may be to, to be seen, but the critical question to the number, you know, employment rate being 65, 67 point is, mm. it, it lacks kind of a quality consideration mm. in, in the sense that, you know, a lot of jobs are created, but if you look at the, um, the quality of the job, 80% of the job are to be given to the elderly people, mm. such as the 65 years yeah. or, you know, 55 years, and those jobs are very low, paid jobs right. and uh, so we cannot uh, quite say that that is a kind of a quality job. So the, the government's uh, target to achieve 70% employment rate is too much quantitative in the sense that right. it lacks a qualitative you know, aspect of the employment policy. Well, um, we, you've talked a great deal. What I'm getting from this is that the government has promised a huge amount but has delivered very little. Mm -hmm. But now, of course, 2015 is a critical year. It's the middle of her term. Mm -hmm. It's a single five-year term. Um, and also, there's no nationwide election this mm -hmm. year, which gives her a pretty free um, political environment to operate within. Given this, what do you think the government should focus on most of all in economic terms this year? Well, I think they have to change the policy regime. Mm. The policy regime that has been followed for the last two years how? So far, the initiative, authority of economic policy is given to Ministry of uh, Strategy and Planning, but that is quite macro-oriented. Mm. You know, Ministry of uh, Strategy and Finance handles all the money, but we have witnessed that in, in many countries, money does not make economy grow. We see that in the States, we see that in the Europe, we even see that in Japan. So managing funds and directing resources, especially finance resources, okay, doesn't quite contribute to real economic growth. So we have to change uh, uh, of the policy regime from, from, from Ministry of Strategy and Finance to the micro ministry, such mm. as uh, Ministry of Information, Ministry of you know, Agriculture, and the Ministry of uh, 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 the Small and Medium Businesses. So, so we have to give more authority to the frontline ministries. So push it down to, to, the, to, more to the front ground line. level, you know, yeah. your, your authorities and ministers. I think that mm. is, uh, uh, I think, very important because mm. the, the philosophy of, you know, economic policy directed by Minister of uh, uh, Strategy is kind of a pretty old 1970s or 1980 right. policy regime. But is it not fair to say that pretty much all Korean governments have been very top-down and perhaps even a little bit top-heavy mm -hmm. in their policy making? And this mm -hmm. is something which has affected every Korean government since the 60s. Suppose, you know, suppose the Ministry of let's say, Information or, mm. a, you know, a Ministry of uh, Agriculture has a new idea mm. and uh, plenty of job opportunities, all right? And if they had the idea, Oh, they have to be approved by the Ministry of Strategy because they control all the money. Mm. So, so for, the, for the Korean economy to, to you know, grow um, in real senses, I think policy authority should be given Push. rather to, you know, to the uh, Ministry of Agriculture, Ministry of Information, Ministry mm. of uh, Trade. So I think the more authority should be given mm. to uh, the the, those the kind of ministries, ministries rather, rather than, than strategic you know, ministries. Con yeah, yeah. He, okay. they control everything. Understood. Mm. Um, that's, that would be, I think, a major paradigm shift in, in Korean governance across the board. Mm -hmm. Last question for yeah. you, Professor Shin. 
Obviously you are a professor, you're used to grading students, and of course you were a former economic advisor to President Park. Right. Um, what grade would you give her thus far? I remember we gave a B minus, you know, about, mm. about just, you know, this half year past the, mm. the discovery. And now? It's, it's very difficult to give higher, higher grade because the discovery is losing momentum yep. in terms of the public support. Yeah. And this government had many uh, failed appointment in the prime minister right. as well as the ministerial jobs. So people has lost the, uh, the trust in, in the ability. So we have lost the two years, in, in fact. So uh, it is really difficult to give uh, better grades than B minus that we gave about a year and a half ago in the summer of 2013. Okay. Okay, but we have uh, three more years to, you know, to solve all the problems. So that depends upon the leadership of this government and the president. If she changes the policy regimes and uh, if we start a new, a new policies and a new uh, ways of economic, you know, development, I think we have uh, a chance to, to recover very rapidly. The one point that I mentioned mm. many times is, you know, you know, the, the growth rate of export has declined uh, negative 10% in the month of January. Mm. Negative 10%. That's a huge, as I said, you know, because of the yen, strong, I mean, the weaker yen, it, the, the effect on the export will be, will be manifested in this, this year. year. And, 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 and the, the month of January and the February, you know, the, the, the decline in the growth rate of export is tremendous. So I think that's going to be the issue for this government, as long as economic growth is concerned. Gotcha. Okay. Well, thanks for pointing out some rather doomy predictions, mm -hmm. um, but also thanks for being very, very frank um, on BizLine. It's always a pleasure to have you on. Professor Shin, thank very you. Honored very honoured. Very much indeed. indeed. There is an app for those who want to do simple stretching exercises every day, but don't know the right way to stretch their bodies. App of the week is Let's Stretch Together that shows you about 40 easy to follow stretching moves. Let's learn simple stretching moves that can ease the day's fatigue before going to bed. You can easily follow them in order by looking at detailed explanations and pictures. Most of all, it measures time by 10 seconds when you stretch and informs you with sound when you finish your stretching, enabling you to efficiently do the exercise. It also provides tips for warming up and cooling down, or tips for stretching while sitting, so let's use them as needed. Now you can maintain your health by doing simple stretching exercises. In this segment of the show, we often talk about technologies that may appear to be science fiction. But today, we'll be talking about a technology that may fall more within the realm of fantasy, because I'm talking about mind reading. Believe it or not, there are now actually technologies available today which can read people's thoughts and then translate them into action by directing a machine to act appropriately. And they do this by reading the so-called voice of the brain, which are brain waves. And this means we can now move a vehicle, play a game, even treat dementia simply by thinking about it. So, let's take a closer look at a technology that is less about the mind and more about the imagination. A local tire company showcased a special vehicle last year. It was a robotic car that does not need the physical presence of a driver in the driver's seat, but just his mind to drive the car. A special mechanism that allows communication between the human brain and an external device reads the driver's mind to put the engine and steering wheel at work. Application of brain reading functions to command and operate external devices is based on a technology dubbed as the brain computer interface. A local university has been experimenting with various researches based on the BCI technology. 뇌에서 발생하는 이런 신경 신호가 신경 신호를 우리가 해독을 해서 또 외부 기기를 작동을 시키거나 아니면 외부하고의 의사소통을 가능하게 해주는 그런 기술을 우리가 브레인 컴퓨터 인터페이스 
BCI라는 기술로 부르고 있습니다. 예를 들어서 오른팔을 움직이는 상상을 한다거나 왼팔을 움직이는 상상을 한다거나 이런 운동 상상을 했을 때이 사람이 어떤 의도를 운동 의도를 가지고 있는지를 뇌파를 통해서 알아낼 수가 있고요. 이런 걸 이용하면 휠체어를 움직인다거나 아니면 컴퓨터 마우스를 조작한다거나 이런 형태의 브레인 컴퓨터 인터페이스 시스템을 만들 수가 있습니다. The BCI technology where research has been most active was conceived to enable people with paralysis or other disabilities to interact with computers and control robotic arms and legs. The research center has been working on a project to enable disabled patients to communicate through the use of brainwave activities. It uses what is called steady state visual evoked potential or the brain's natural electrical potential response for visual stimuli. Using a visual stimulus flashing at some given frequency that can incite changes in electric potential and brain signals, words or even a full sentence can be organized. 특정한 주파수로 깜빡이고 있는 전멸하는 자극, 시각 자극을 쳐다보고 있을 때 예를 들어서 10Hz로 깜빡이고 있는 시각 자극을 쳐다보고 있으면 10Hz에 해당되는 뇌파의 파워가 증가를 합니다. 그래서 이런 현상을 이용을 하면 우리가 어, 뇌파의 어떤 주파수 성분의 변화를 시간에 따른 변화를 우리가 어, 잘 분석을 해내게 되면 이 사람이 지금 어떤 주파수로 깜빡이고 있는 시각 자극을 쳐다보고 있는지를 알 수가 있는 거죠. Patients paralyzed from head to toe who cannot move or communicate freely alone can call up for help just by thinking about it. 5m 우측 하단에 환자에게 최대한 거슬리지 않는 정도의 어떤 이 밝기와 그다음에 그런 이제 대조를 가지고 있는 그런 자극을 만들어서 그렇게 불편하지 않은 정도로 깜빡이게 만들어 놓고요. 환자가 보호자를 호출하고 싶을 때그 환자가 깜빡이고 있는 자극을 5초에서 10초 정도 쳐다보고 있으면 컴퓨터가 그 자극을 보고 있다라는 걸 인식을 해서 보호자를 호출하는 그런 시스템입니다. It won't be long before the brain reading technology currently mostly used to help patients to connect better with the external environment is applied in consumer electronics and activate automobiles and robots. 최근에 웨어러블 형태의 뇌파 측정 시스템들이 많이 출시가 돼서 나오고 있습니다. 그래서 그런 시스템들을 이용을 해서 일반인들에게 적용할 수 있는 BCI 기술들을 연구하려는 그런 시도들이 전 세계적으로 많이 일어나고 있고요. 대표적인 어플리케이션은 저희가 생각할 때는 교육이라든가 아니면 엔터테인먼트라든가 아니면 뭐내 어, 건강을 모니터링하는 그런 시스템이라든가 특히 이제 수면 건강을 모니터링하는 시스템 이런 것들이 이미 이제 시제품들이 나와서 이제 어, 팔리기 시작하고 있는 그런 단계입니다. A local venture company has developed BCI applications for consumer use. The company introduced various devices to enjoy concentration-based games, video games. The device measures the electrical signals that zip between neurons in the brain to play games with the mind rather than a joystick or keyboard. The device measures the user's real-time brainwave, and we interlock it with the process of the games by analyzing and indexing how much the user is concentrating. Through analyzing alpha wave, which occurs when meditating, and SMR wave, which occur when concentrating. For example, if we converge BCI technology with racing games, when the user's concentration is high, the speed of the car becomes faster. And when the user's concentration is low, the speed of the car becomes slower. It is a principle which induces fun and immersion. The device not just assists game playing, but enhances concentration and cognitive power to help prevent loss of memory as well. We expect that the brainwave games will be converged with virtual realities to let the users experience a new world of games. It shall prevent and treat ADHD for children happens when they overuse their smartphones or play too much games. Stress for the adults when they have diversified overworks. And for elders, it will be expanded to medical fields such as to give preventions and treatments for dementia and brain diseases. Brain reading technology has slowly entered the consumer world through game-assisting devices. The research has been mostly led by advanced countries like the United States, Europe, and Japan. Korea has joined the market late, but received impetus through state sponsoring of neuroscience fields. 
scientific fiction like brain-enabled technology will become a reality and change the way of life once researchers crack the individualistic brain map for universal use. 아직까지 사실 기술적으로 해결해야 될 문제들이 많이 남아 있습니다. 그 중에 하나가 뭐냐면은 이 뇌파의 개인 차거든요. 뇌파가 사람들마다 똑같은 뇌파가 나온다라고 하면은 사실 뭐 문제 될게 전혀 없는데요. 근데 우리가 심박이라든가 다른 어떤 생체 신호에 비해서 뇌파는 불확실도가 상당히 큽니다. 그리고 이제 개인 차가 클 뿐만이 아니라 어 본인의 현재 상태에 따라서도 뇌파의 변화가 상당히 많이 발생을 하게 되고요. 예를 들면은 어 우리가 전날에 뭐 술을 많이 마셨다거나 하면 다음 날에 나오는 뇌파가 술을 마시지 않은 날을 하고 다른 형태의 뇌파가 발생을 하게 되고요. 그래서 이런 점들, 이런 이제 뇌파의 변동성이 크다라는 문제와 개인들 사이의 차이가 많이 크다. 그래서 그런 것들을 극복할 수 있는 그런 기술들이 개발이 돼야 됩니다. Brain Computer Interface Technology has been dubbed as a technology that can change the 21st century for decades. One of these days, we may be putting our minds to do things our hands and feet have done. Across the country, there exist a range of regulations designed to make life convenient, safe and comfortable. But as we all know, these regulations, from parking spaces to garbage disposal, are constantly being violated. As a result, a range of ICT-based systems are now coming online that are designed to oversee these regulations and punish their violators. So, let's meet the virtual big brother. The ICT systems which are designed to process civic complaints more accurately and more efficiently than ever before. We come across various inconveniences and risk factors in our lives. Now, with just a smartphone, we can easily report them and check how they are processed. We introduce you to the Information and Communications Technology-based Smart Civil Complaint Processing Services. Electric poles with wires hanging loose. Illegal parking that threatens children's way to school. Pipes sticking out from sidewalks. These are risk factors we can come across in our daily lives. But these risk factors are frequently neglected as people do not know where they should report them and how they will be processed after reporting. Now we can report such risk factors through a smartphone app. The web-based Safety Shinmungo service, a place where people can report such risks and make civil complaints, has also become available on mobile devices. 우리 생활 주변에 어, 안전 취약 부분에 대해서 우리 주민들이나 시설 관리자들이 제일 잘 알고 있습니다. 그래서 그러한 분들이 언제 어디서나 신고할 수 있는 웹사이트를 제공하기 위해서 만들어졌습니다. After taking a picture of a severely cracked wall that looks as though it could collapse and reporting it, the report is immediately sent to the person in charge of the relevant division. The outcome of the report has to be informed to the reporter within seven days after the report is made, so authorities cannot delay conducting the inspection or taking action. The safety inspection revealed that the cracked wall was in serious danger of collapse if left alone. Without the report by a citizen, the dangerous wall could have just been neglected. After the inspection, the outcome is sent to the contact number of the reporter. As the reporter can soon check how the risk factor will be taken care of in the future and how it is being improved, this can induce citizens to more actively take part in reporting risk factors in their lives. 2월 현재 저희 접수된 제보 건수는 3,600건이 되겠습니다. 어, 3,600건 중에 3,300여 건이 완료가 됐고요. 어, 나머지 한 6%에 대해서는 
추진 중에 있습니다. 어, 앞으로 그 추진되는 내용에 대해서는 저희가 지속적으로 점검을 하고 개선될 수 있도록 독려할 계획으로 있습니다. The subway is used by so many people. It's also a place where various accidents and incidents happen. To ease such inconvenience, Seoul City has released a safety protection app for the subway. Using the app, you can report emergencies like urgent patients or crimes like sexual harassment. Through a Wi-Fi network, information of the train and its location will be simultaneously sent to the subway security guards and police so that they can immediately go to the location. An upside of such smartphone reporting app is that it has improved the accessibility of reporting using smartphones which have high penetration. This is much easier than searching for a phone number and calling the person in charge. It's also faster to deal with the situation using location information. With the rise in the reporting rate, surveillance by citizens can also function properly. 첫 번째는 이제 과거에는 사후적인 그러니까 대응과 복구가 중심이었다면 워낙 스케일이 커지다 보니까 앞으로는 이제 예방과 대비가 중심이고요. 그러다 보니까 IT에 이용한 여러 가지 빅데이터 이런 어, 성능이 필요하고요. 두 번째는 신속성입니다. 그러니까 빨리 뭔가 발생했을 경우에 빨리 전달 해야 되는 거고 세 번째는 현장에서 무엇이 벌어지고, 벌어지고 있는지 현장에서 바로 생생히 전달이 돼야 되겠죠. 그러니까 예를 들어 로보틱스라든가 이와 같은 것 또는 뭐 위성이라든가 현장을 통해서 과거엔 사람이 접근할 수 없었던 그런 위험의 현장들이 생생하게 전달되도록 하기 위해서 세 가지 원인으로 ICT 도움이 많이 필요하다고 생각이 됩니다. In fact, citizens' reporting rate has surged after the Ministry of Government Administration and Home Affairs released an app that enables users to report inconveniences in life or crimes. Illegal parking or stopping by vehicles in small side streets or illegal discarding of trash can be neglected and overlooked. Citizens' participation has increased as they can report such things with their smartphones and immediately receive the outcome of how the cases are being handled. This has naturally led to the enhancement of civic consciousness. 기존에는 그 전화나 인터넷으로 신고를 하게 되면은 아무래도 또 잊어버리게 되고 또 불편한 점이 많았는데 현장에서 스마트폰으로 바로 신고를 할수 있어서 좀더 신속하고 빠르게 어, 민원을 어, 신고를 할 수가 있고 또 이런 점 때문에 국민들의 참여도가 점점 더 높아져서 호응이 더 높은 걸로 알고 있습니다. But the fact that ministries and local governments are releasing so many reporting apps is a downside that needs to be changed. If there are too many apps by situation, it will be tough for people to remember them, and this will lead to low usage. 민간의 서비스와 공공 서비스가 어떻게 융합되는가가 상당히 중요합니다. 그러니까 물론 홍보도 물론 중요하지만 사람들 관심이 없는 서비스를 아무리 홍보를 해본들 홍보 자체가 사람들한테 어필이 되지 않거든요. 근데 이미 사람들 많이 쓰고 있는 서비스에서 검색 결과가 공공 서비스가 나온다면 사람들 자연히 이렇게 그 활용이 될 수가 있겠죠. The public service-linked ICT service is one that helps process civil complaints quickly. ICT is playing the role of a helper that enhances civic consciousness in our society. North Korea recently released images of Kim Jong-un overseeing construction sites in Pyongyang from a private aircraft. And compared to his permit-like father, Kim Jong-il, Kim Jong-un seems far more PR-friendly. Indeed, given his beaming face, he seems to truly enjoy media ops and public appearances. So, what is driving this showmanship-style leadership? What message is he trying to convey? And is he being effective? In his latest propaganda stunt, North Korea's Kim Jong-un is seen flying his own plane around Pyongyang. The state media has turned into a non-stop propaganda machine, churning out documentaries and reports on his daily activities. The broadcast by Korean Central TV showed Kim flying and proudly looking down on the streets of Pyongyang. But one can only wonder why he had to get on a plane to inspect streets of the capital. 
북한 국전쟁 이후에 평양 상공에 그렇게 좁은 비행을 한 적이 없다고 할때 아, 평양 시민들 또 북한 주민들에게 젊은 지도자로서 용기 있는 지도자다. 신세대 30대 지도자는 과감하게 비행기를 타고 평양을 날고 있고 모지않아 모스크바에도 날아갈 것이다. 이런 것을 이제 과시하는 그런 그 정치 행보라고 평가할 수 있습니다. Unlike his late father and former leader Kim Jong-il, the younger Kim is hardly shy about displaying himself and likes to be public as much as possible. His boldness and openness contrasts with his father, who had preferred to keep himself as a mystified leader, making inspections quietly rather than openly. The late Kim rarely used the aircraft to travel. He took the train for all of his seven trips to China during his lifetime, as well as for the month-long stay in Russia in 2001. Kim Jong-il 위원장이 은둔형 지도자였다. 또 자신의 그 장거리 여행 과정이 대체로 기차를 통한 여행이었다 이렇게 본다면 김정은 전위원장은 굉장히 자기 과시형 그리고 굉장히 오픈형 지도자 이미지다. 또그 과정에서 아버지가 거의 타지 않았던 비행기를 자주 타면서 뭔가 좀 세련된 지도자 이미지 또 서구 지도자들과 별 차이 없는 그런 지도자로서의 이미지를 내외에 과시하는 그런 차원의 이미지 정치를 보이고 있다 이렇게 볼 수도 있습니다. His exhibitionist style has become part of his personality. In May of last year, he used Air Force One to visit an Air Force base which is just 53 kilometers away from Pyongyang. He of course demanded full red carpet treatment. It was a bizarre way of demonstrating power to fly to a place that could be arrived by just a 30-minute car ride on the expressway. The young leader has also been on a tank, submarine, and roller coaster. All of his energetic activities have been rigorously followed and told in great bombastic detail to the public. Kim Jong-il, Kim Il-sung, Kim Jong-un's descendants are past e v i d e n c and have been the m o s t o r i o n a l leaders of the Korean War. If they have been the m o s t o r i o n a l leaders of the Korean War, Kim Jong-un is now 그리고 또 미래 비전을 제시하는 리더십으로 북한을 통치하고 있다. 즉 아, 컴퓨터를 잘하는 지도자 김정은이 가끔 현지 지도할 때마다 컴퓨터를 직접 작동하고 또 비행기를 직접 조종하면서 이륙하고 또 비행을 진행하고 이런 것들은 결국 아, 외국에 유학까지 한 우리 신세대 지도자는 천재적이고 남들이 못하는 것을 한다. But ironically, despite all the flowery talk, the Air Force One Kim Jong-un flaunted was an old-fashioned airplane of former Soviet Union days purchased more than 20 years ago. The submarine he boarded was a Soviet vessel that disappeared with the end of the Cold War. Still, they are showcased for the North Korean audience. 비록 그 잠수함이 낡은 잠수함일지언정 우리가 볼때그 우리 기준으로 이제 낡고 아주 노후된 뭔가 재래식 무기라는 게 보이지만 북한 주민들이 볼 때는 처음 보는 장면들입니다. 그렇기 때문에 그 사진들, 화면들은 다 북한 주민들을 겨냥한 것이기 때문에 북한 주민들이 볼때 아, 최고 사령관이 저렇게 잠수함을 직접 타고 전쟁을 아, 말하자면 전투를 진두에서 지휘한다 이런 것을 과시하기 위해서 어, 타는 것이고 Some say Kim picked up his flamboyant and open ways during his schooling in Switzerland. But others believe there is a more shrewd calculation behind the political propaganda campaign. 인천 비행장을 방문해서 비행기를 타고 뭐 레드 카펫을 깔고 부부 동반에서 등장한다든지 이런 것들은 결국 자기 권력이 공고하지 못하다. 이런 걸 이제 보여 주는 것이기 때문에 우리가 그 내부에 대해서 볼때 김정은이 무슨 현지지도 횟수나 이런 것이 많다고 해서 반드시 그의 리더십이 지금 완성되거나 절정에 달해 있다. 이렇게 보는 것은 좀 문제가 있을 수 있습니다. Kim Jong-un is in his fourth year of rule. But all the ostentatious propaganda work suggests he still feels insecure about his power and control over the people. 여전히 경제가 어렵고 
인민들 생활은 어, 상당히 뭐 해결에 대한 문제들이 많기 때문에 사회적으로 이것이 안정되었다고 보기는 상당히 어렵습니다. 분명히 이런 미래에는 이런 사회적 불안이라든가 불만이 표출되고 가시화되어서 정권을 위협하는 세력이 나올 수 있거든요. 그렇기 때문에 이러한 것을 미리 차단하고 문제를 해결해 나가려고 한다는 겁니다. 어, 지금 보여지고, 보여지고 있는 어, 이러한 모든 것들이 뭐 과시든 또뭐 이미지 메이킹 정치든 간에 이러한 차원에서 이루어지고 있는 것이 아닌가 그렇게 생각을 합니다. The propaganda campaign does not stop with military prowess and other skills. Kim is often seen amongst children at school and orphanages to highlight his benevolence and softer side. His presence at the newly created ski resort and theme park during the early stage of his rule also was staged to pitch his appeal to the people. 보다 좀 가시적인 성과를 단기간에 보여줄 수 있는 사업들, 그리고 놀이공원이라든가 스키장이라든가 이러한 것들을 어, 추진하는 것이 어, 분석의 일반적인 내용입니다. 단기간에 성과를 보여줄 수 있는 문화체육 분야를 통해서 새로운 어떤 통지 방식이나 변화의 가능성을 그 인민들에게 보여주려는 의도가 있다는 거죠. So how is the showcase politics working? A widening gap with reality can end up building public resentment toward the leadership. 김정은 제일 위원장의 지금의 어떤 정치 방식에다가 자신이 실질적인 내치나 대외 관계에서 성과를 꾸준히 거두어내는 그걸 통해서 실질적인 어떤 안정성들을 보여주는 이런 것이 대단히 중요하다고 봅니다. Kim is now already in his fourth year in power, but all the strenuous work on propaganda and image making just underscores the vulnerability of his regime and power. And that's all we have time for on Bizline this week. But do please join us again next week when we'll be taking you to Barcelona, Spain and the Mobile World Congress 2015. Now this is the premier mobile congress of the year and it will be showcasing all the latest trends and all the latest technologies. And one of the main issues of discussion in Barcelona this year was fintech or financial technology. And this comes at a time when Korea's national flagship, Samsung Electronics, has just firmly set foot in this sector as it releases Samsung Pay. We'll be telling you more about that next week, but that's all for now. I'm Andrew Salmon. This was Bizline. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.